about the proposed budget Governor Rick Scott is presenting to the legislature next month. And we've asked him here today to talk about that and other topics. His, re his budget request represents the biggest budget in Florida history. A proposed $74.2 billion budget that if approved would be up 6% from this year. When he was elected a little over two years ago, Governor Scott championed major spending cuts. His new budget seeks significant increases, including in education. We're appreciative of the governor. Remember you all, he came here when he was running for office, holding his commitment to annually address the Forum Club and are especially grateful he has agreed to do so prior to the start of the legislative session. Governor Scott is Florida's 45th governor he was elected in 2010, campaigning on bringing a work ethic to the office. He made a mark in the healthcare industry, having started Columbia Hospital Corporation, which has since grown to become the world's largest healthcare company, with locations in 37 states and two foreign countries. The governor faces re-election in 2014. Please join me in welcoming Governor Rick Scott. Thank you. Thank you. It's always nice to come here. The, um, so, you know, the forum clubs around the state that I've had the opportunity to go to, it's just a wonderful group of people. And they care about the communities that they're in. And so it's always nice to come to Palm Beach. It's always nice to see your CFO, uh, Jeff Atwater. Uh, we get to sit on cabinet together and get to work together. He does a great job. Uh, he's very focused on making sure that we're fiscally responsible. <laughs> By the way, we have um, paid down state debt, uh, $2 billion in the last two years. It's the first time in 20 years that we had an increased state debt, a big, about a $1 billion a year for 20 straight years. And so the CFO has done a good job. We made sure our credit rating went up, didn't go down. So your CFO has done a great job. I just want to recognize um, Senator Phil Lewis for all of his work. Um, passed away a few months ago, but somebody that was, you know, uh, what Tax Watch has done has been a great resource for all of us in elected office. Uh, but you had a great senator here, so I think we all need to recognize what uh, what he did. Also, the, um, I think the president when I, did, when I was running was Wendy Link, and just in the last month I've appointed her to the Board of Governors, and so she'll do a great job uh, as, as a member of the Board of Governors for the state university system. And then when I came into office, part of what I ran on, as, well, most of what I ran on was either jobs or education, and when I, probably the first 30 days, the person that called me the most to make sure that I called on companies to get things done uh, was Kelly Smallridge. So I think Kelly's sitting over, over here. And Kelly's done a great job and has got great, a lot of stuff done. All right, so today I came to talk about the priorities in my family first budget, uh, and I announced it two weeks ago. The top two priorities in my budget are one, to eliminate the manufacturing tax, uh, the, the sales tax on manufacturing equipment, so we can get more jobs for, for, uh, for Florida families, and a $2,500 pay raise for all of our classroom teachers because they have done an outstanding job. But before I get to these two areas, I want to talk about an important topic that we don't talk about enough, and I know this part of the state in particular has a significant interest in this. It's our state's investments in our environment, and we have a beautiful environment. Each of us want Florida to be a beautiful place for our families, our tourists, our visitors, and each of, in my case now I have a grandson, I want him to be able to enjoy uh, all the things that all of us enjoy in this environment. So I, want to I was going to ask a few people to come up here and just recognize them. I want to start by thanking some individuals who have been very important partners for the state in protecting our environment. First, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Greco, Deputy District Commander for South Florida Jacksonville District, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. He, he has been responsible for the for leadership at the core, and the core is clearly a group that clearly wants to get things done. The second, second is Shannon. Shannon, if you want to come up. 
Yeah. I think, yeah. Greco, if you can come up. Because at the end, I think we ought to recognize all, everybody for what they've done. But Shannon is the director of the Everglades Restoration, U.S. Department of the Interior. Shannon has been on all sides of the Everglades Restoration issue, first as a board member of the Everglades Foundation, then as a board member of the Water Management District, and now at the U.S. Department of Interior, which is clearly one of our most helpful federal partners. Next is uh, Donato Surratt, ecologist at the Everglades National Park, U.S. Department of the Interior, and Rolf Olson, Deputy Refuge Manager, Loxahatchee Natural Wildlife Refuge, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They both know the, very, the importance of making sure that we do the right thing for our ecosystem. And I, I know they would both agree that the Everglades are one of our nation's crown jewels, and some people would say are clearly our crown jewel. Next is Chairman Joe Collins, Board Chairman of the South Florida Water Management District. His leadership of the South Florida Water Management District has been tremendous. And it's not, that's not the easiest job in the world. And I know it's a very high paying, and it's very, I know it's a high paying job though, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa Meeker, Executive Director of the South Florida Water Management District. She and her team of scientists and engineers came up with a plan that will significantly improve the flow and quality of water in the Everglades. And she has done a great job. Next, Eric Draper, Executive Director of the Audubon of Florida. He is a tireless advocate. And let me tell you, he is tireless. He is everywhere in the state. He's in Tallahassee a lot, making sure that we do the right thing. But he's a tireless advocate for preserving the natural resources that make the state of Florida the beautiful place it is. Eric Eichenberg, the executive director of the Everglades Foundation. Without his partnership, we could not have brought forward the plan that we have today. So Eric and everybody at the, uh, the Everglades Foundation has done a great job. And then uh, Donald Forgione, he's the director of the Florida State Parks. Donald started out as a um, right out of school at the Florida Park Service as a Park Service Specialist and has worked his way to the top, earning the respect of everyone along the way. And does, he does a great job. And there's no question we have the number one state park system uh, in the country. Paul Wright, District Manager of the Southeast District Florida State Parks. He is an excellent ambassador the, for the Florida Park Service in your region and is a very uh, outstanding um, fisherman. So I'll go ahead and talk, but I want to first off introduce all these individuals and tell you they are making great things happen in this state on the environment. And whether it's the Everglades or some other things, they have done a great job. And I just want to give them a big round of applause. So you don't have to step So right after I became governor, uh, we were down talking about the, um, uh, the port down in Miami. And what we're talking about is you know, getting the dredge project done so we could, so we could uh, finish the, uh, the project we had down there to get it dredged to 50 feet, which would end up about 33,000 jobs. And so Colonel Patano, who at the time was commander of the Army Corps of Engineers Jacksonville District, said, look, you have, he says, you have the opportunity to make sure that we get the Everglades Restoration Project done and stop, stop this focus on politics and litigation rather than getting something done. So that, the team that was up here, every one of them had an impact on making sure that happened. So when I said I wanted to propose a plan though to uh, improve the flow of water and quality of water through the, through the Everglades, a lot of people said, you are crazy. Uh, if you propose anything, all that's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of attacks. Uh, because it hadn't, it hadn't been done. I mean, we'd had this litigation going on for decades. So I've been in business all my life. I've never gotten a deal done without proposing something. I mean, it, just, it doesn't happen. And so I went ahead with the support of everybody uh, around the table and proposed something. And, you know, part of my success in business was I listened to people I proposed something knowing, look, it was going to change, but if we could propose something that was a win-win, we could get historic things done. So together, we worked together, all the federal and state partners, and you had to have all of them, around the same table to listen to their concerns and to work out a solution that everybody could agree on and everybody could, could feel comfortable it was a win-win. So we worked with some great leaders at the federal level. And what I start off as we were talking to them, say, look, you're in the same position I'm in. These jobs are fleeting. 
you want to get things done when you finish. So we worked with Lisa Jackson at the Environmental Protection Agency. I talked to her the other day. She's going to be leaving, but she was very helpful. Secretary of the Interior, Interior Ken Salazar, I spoke to him the other day also, and he's leaving. Again, somebody that was very helpful. Attorney General Eric Holder from the Justice Department. Joel and Darcy with the Army Corps of Engineers. So all of those individuals were very uh, helpful in getting this done. So we, this team that we just had up here, we built a great relationship with our federal partners. And they were very helpful in trying to find a win-win. So Department of Environmental Protection Secretary Herschel Vineyard and Executive Director Melissa Meeker came up with a strategy and a plan that they believed would be uh, successful, and we presented it. Chairman Collins and his board helped present a plan that was cost-effective, achievable, and based on sound science and engineering, and was agreed upon after gathering, in, gathering input from all of our federal partners and getting their advice, and we came up with a win-win. But we wouldn't have been able to do it if it hadn't been for Eric Draper and Eric Eichenberg and individuals that work with them that let our federal partners know that they were very supportive, that this was the right path to go down to get something done. So on top of everybody that worked hard on that, I want to thank Eric and I want to thank Eric and uh, for Eric uh, to, for doing this because we wouldn't have gotten it done for it wasn't support of the Audubon Society and the Everglades Foundation. So thank you very much. So as we know, the Everglades, the health of the Everglades ecosystem is critical to the future of our state and clearly critical, critical to the, this area of the state. So I'm personally committed to making sure Florida stands behind what we agreed to last year to make sure that we do the right things uh, for the Everglades. In the budget I submitted to the legislature two weeks ago, I proposed $60 million in Everglades funding for the Water Quality Plan, the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, the Lake Oca uh, Okeechobee Protection Plan, and the Caloosahatchee and St. Lucie River Watershed Protection Plan. And it was only possible because in my first year, we made tough choices, we lived within our means, but by doing that, we were able to make the right decisions to get our economy going again. And now this year, for the first time since 2008, we have a projected budget surplus instead of budget deficit. It's great walking in, by the way. Your first year, you have a $3.7 billion budget deficit, and the second, 1.7, and then nobody comes to your office and says, cut anything, and nobody comes to your office and says, raise my taxes, so it's not that easy. But I just want to finish again by just giving this group a round of applause for what they accomplished, because this is historic, and it will change the, it'll change the focus on the Everglades for years to come. So thank you again for what you did. So one of the reasons, I didn't grow up in Florida. Uh, we love Florida. I've spent a lot of time here. But one of the reasons I wanted to move to Florida is because of the beauty of the beaches. Our beaches, there is no question we have the best beaches uh, in the world. I compete, as you know, with Governor Perry in Texas all the time for who's got the best state for jobs. And I let him know there is no question we have better beaches. And uh, by the way, there's a uh, show on NBC Sports that was aired Sunday, I think, and I think it's aired again Wednesday, where uh, I let him know that we have better fishing, and he's not as good a fisherman as Florida fishermen are also. So I don't know if anybody had a chance to see that. But he, I gave him, um, I invited him to Florida for fishing. I said, let's in, each invite a, uh, a veteran, uh, and so we did, and I said, let's have team hats, I'll bring them. My team was called Beat Perry, his team was called I'm Worried. And then uh, I got a trophy that tall, and Florida has been number one for job creation for eight straight years as far as perception of where to do business. And so I bought one with a big number two trophy on it, and I gave it to him nas nationally on the, the Neil Cavuto show. He was so appreciative, <laughs> not really. But, so, but one of the things, I, one of the reasons I, I like Florida and we, my family moved here is we love the beaches. I now have a grandson. This weekend I had the opportunity to be in Naples. We went to uh, the beach both on, uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So taking care of the beaches are very, is very, very important to me. Now, as you know, last year, parts of Palm Beach County were devastated uh, by flooding from Hurricane Isaac. The Water Management District did a great job of managing flooding to the extent that they could by pump or minimizing flooding so they could by uh, to the extent they could by pumping more than 105 
$1.5 billion gallons of water away from residents in Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade counties. They brought in temporary pumps to aid hardest-hit communities and worked to relieve pressure on a levy, adjacent, levy adjacent to homes in western Palm Beach County. Right after the, after the storm, I got to tour uh, this area, and you just felt so sorry for those families. But what you can feel good about is the first responders, law enforcement, fire, the water, the, uh, what the moral water management district did, what your local emergency management team did, what Fish and Wildlife did, what state emergency management team did. And I just think all of them did a great job uh, of dealing with that issue. Now, as part of my recommend, recommended budget, I've also recommended $8 million to focus on the levy system in this area. It's a key that our levees are strong to ensure we minimize flooding in the wake of future storms. And while we all want to believe we'll never have a hurricane, and we won't, well, I'm governor, which would be nice, uh, but, you know, the odds are we will at some point. Also, recommend, also in my recommended budget is an increase in funding for improvements to our state parks. We are the only state, I think, Donald, still, that we're the only state that's won a gold medal two times. We can win it every six years. Uh, hopefully this year we'll win it again. But we have great state parks. Uh, when, I was a, when I was younger, I was a uh, Boy Scout and then an Eagle Scout. And so thank goodness for parks. Uh, hopefully, fortunately, we didn't burn any down. We did the right things. Although I, I was telling somebody the story the other day, my first camp experience, and I, I read the book, you're supposed to make a moat around your, uh, your tent. Uh, they didn't tell me not to put my tent on a hill. And so it rained all night, and it, and it went over my little moat and uh, all through my tent. So I got no sleep. But right here in, our, in your backyard, you have some of the most beautiful and visited state parks in Florida. You can pitch a tent at Jonathan Dickinson State Park or watch for, or watch for sea turtles to hatch at John D. MacArthur Beach State Park. To the south of us, you can paddle the lagoon in a kayak or canoe at Hugh Taylor Birch State Park, one of the many state parks listed on the Great Florida Birding Trail. We also included $75 million in the budget for Florida Forever funding, which will focus on acquiring the lands needed for water res uh, resource protection, and part of that's included $25 million out of general revenues. Now, before, because we made the hard choices two years ago, lived within our means, focused on where, how we get our economy going again, our economy is back on track. Now the key is we have to make smart choices where we can get job growth and make sure our children can get a great education system. So I've focused on two things. One, making sure that our manufacturing companies are not at an economic disadvantage to open up a manufacturing plant or expanding here versus another state. We're one of the few states that has a tax on uh, sales tax on manufacturing equipment. We only have 4.3 percent of our uh, state workers are, manu are in manufacturing jobs, about 300,000. That's less than half the national average. And if you, if you think about it for a second, I mean, with our, with our seaports, uh, with our universities, with all these things, we should have above the national average number of manufacturing jobs. But we've put our state at an economic disadvantage. So one of the two things I really care about this session, one of my two priorities, is we've got to get rid of that tax. We've got to get more jobs for Florida families by having more manufacturing jobs in this state. The second is our teachers. Right now, according to Education Week magazine, we're number six in the country as far as the best place for education. With a recent um, international survey, our fourth graders are number two in the world in reading, barely behind Singapore. And we're above the national average for, uh, for math for our fourth graders. And the National Council for Teacher Quality said that our teachers are the most effective in the country. So we've got to make sure we fund education properly. So in my budget, I, I uh, recommended $1.2 billion for K-12 K through funding that adds to the billion dollars we put in last year, but included as part of that $1.2 billion is a $2,500 tax or a salary increase for every classroom teacher. And the like, and the reason is our teachers are doing a great job. We're moving a Common Core. Any of you that that travel the state and are traveling and talk to schools, you know that we have great schools. Now, your, your county here has, is the only one that has gotten A rating for eight straight years. You've got <laughs> – 
Your superintendent is doing a great job. Your school board is doing a great job. But we've got to continue to get our economy going again so we can continue to fund education. So I just want to applaud uh, everybody in your school system here for what they've done. I want to make sure uh, hopefully everyone here will work with our legislature and make sure we get rid of the sales tax on manufacturing uh, and equipment, uh, make sure we get the $2,500 pay raise for all of our classroom teachers, and make sure that we keep jobs going. Uh, one of the things that just happened just recently right here in Palm Beach County is Pratt & Whitney. Uh, I met with their CEO last June over in, uh, at the air show outside London. Uh, I met with him just a few uh, weeks ago with uh, Kelly Smallridge, but they're adding 23, uh, 230 jobs, 2300 would be nice, 230 jobs right here in Palm Beach County. And so every time we can help those manufacturing companies, we'll get more jobs here. Let me finish by telling you, it's always wonderful to be here. Uh, I appreciate all your questions. Uh, I look forward to coming back. Uh, but thanks for what you're doing to get our economy going. Uh, this is a very vibrant part of our economy. It's going to continue to do well. And I'm very appreciative of all of your efforts to get jobs and make sure we constantly improve education. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Governor, thank you again for taking the time to address us. And uh, as a small token of our appreciation, we'd like oh, to give thanks. you this gift. Now, you've been here before, so you know that the toughest questions always come from the students. And they're going to be up first. And up first, we're going to have the Wellington debate team. Will the member of the Wellington debate team please stand and ask the question of the governor? Governor, several months ago, you challenged state colleges to offer a $10,000 bachelor's degree, which would be a welcome relief to a lot of teenagers and their parents. However, State Board of Education Vice Rob Roberto Martinez believes this would create a cheap four-year degree and would undermine the quality and value of a higher education. Additionally, your idea would not cover the state's university system, which includes the University of Florida and Florida State. Assuming your proposal is able to be put into action, how feasible is it to bring these other large universities into the mix? Well, first off, the, I put a challenge out last November for all of our state colleges uh, to say, can you provide a degree, a four-year degree, in an area where we know there's jobs for $10,000? And the reason is, we've, if, we, if you think about our state for a second, almost half of our families in our state make less than $50,000 a year. Uh, I went to junior college uh, my first year, and then I went to the Navy. It costs $200 a semester then. Uh, the university costs $255 a semester. So I could go to school, work, and I'd end up with debt. Today, that's very difficult to do. So we've got to, we've got to use every re resource we can to control the growth rate in tuition. Every state college that has a four-year program in our state, 23 out of our 28, every one of them came up with a degree for $10,000, and some of them came up with multiple degrees of $10,000 in areas where people can get jobs. Now, our universities. Our universities have been raising tuition at about 13% for five straight years. Very few families in this state have seen their income go up at 13% a year for five straight years. We've got to figure out a way that we can control the growth rate in tuition. So we're working with our universities. Uh, we're working with the Board of Governors. My goal is to hold the line on tuition increase. Uh, I don't know if, you, if you've looked at what a prepaid uh, college plan costs now, but if you want to pay up front, it's $54,000. $54,000. If tuition from, from this day going forward went up at 3% a year, it would be $18,000. We've got to figure out a way to provide a great education system without raising tuition each and every year 13 plus percent. So I'm, my plan is to work with the Board of Governors, to work with our universities, to hold the line on tuition increases. Now part of the benefit of having a better economy is we can invest. So one thing we're doing in this, in this, um, in this budget, part of our funding for state colleges going forward will be performance funding. Part of our funding for our university system will be performance funding, and it's going to be tied to three things. And it'll be, it'll, be, uh, it'll be very specific criteria with the Board of Governors on the university system and the Board of Education on the state college will be three, these three things. And think about when you went to college, what you cared about. One, 
what's it cost per degree? I, for every student that, that, that comes through the system and gets a degree, what did we actually spend? Two, when you finish, do you have a job or are you going on to higher education? Very few people I talk about saying, I want to graduate from college, or state college or university and not be employed. I haven't found any yet. And then third, how much money do people make when they leave? I went to school because I thought I was going to have a better paying job when I finished. So, what we, so part of the budget I propose is part of the funding, um, $14 million at our state colleges and $160 million at our universities, will be tied to performance funding. So everybody, so the universities and state colleges that do the best of those three things will get more funding. Um, that's, that's what happened in my business career, and I believe the same thing will, will, should happen with state colleges and universities. Thank you, Governor. Our second question will come from the South Fork High School A-Games team. Please proceed. Hello, Governor Scott. My name is Claire Castle. Um, my question is, in light of the recent school shootings, where do you stand on issues like gun control and the proposed assault weapons ban? Sure. The, I believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, I'm going to continue to uh, defend the Second Amendment. At the si Thank you. I also believe in safety. Uh, we are our sheriffs, our police chiefs, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, um, our schools, um, they, have done, they have done a good job. We're at a 41-year low in our crime rate in the state right now. 41-year low. Now, at the same time, we've got, to look at, we've got to look at how do we make sure that your, your children, your family, if they're working out of school, if you go visit a school, that you're safe. Uh, so we've put in funding uh, to improve in my, in my recommended budget to uh, for uh, public safety. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is work with sheriffs, police chiefs, uh, individuals that are working around schools to come up with ways that we can, can everything we can do to make it safer and safer. Uh, but one positive about our state right now is we are at a 41 year low crime rate, but you have to work at this every day. Thank you, Governor. Governor, with a brighter economic outlook, are we on track for reaching our 700,000 jobs in seven years goal? Absolutely. We're, so here's, here's where we were and here's where we've come. Um, the four years before I became governor, the state had lost 825,000 jobs. The unemployment rate had gone from 3.5 to 11.1 percent. We had increased state debt $5.2 billion. The housing market had collapsed. So here's the, way, here's the way I thought about it when I came into office. If you think about what, if you think about, as governor, you represent 19.2 million people. So if you're going to raise the standard of living uh, for your community, what, you, what do you have to do? You've, you've got to figure out how, you, you've got to play to your strengths, and you've got to get more people to do business with the people who live in your state. So what should we do well at? One, we should do well at tourism. So we increase funding for Visit Florida. So in 2012, we had 89, about 89 million tourists in the state. As individuals come to our state, they buy homes, they want to move here, they move their businesses here and things like that. Next are seaports. We have 15 seaports in our state. If you look historically, we have not been very aggressive at investing in our seaports. There's a lot of jobs. There's 550,000 jobs, direct or indirect, tied to our seaports. This year, we'll, we'll spend $288 million around our ports. Things such as the Port of Miami. At the Port of Miami, we finished the dredge project. That's 33,000 jobs. Port Everglades, we've done projects both there and in an inland port. Uh, in the Jacks Port, we just, uh, we're going to fund approximately $40 million to uh, deal with an issue that the, the, uh, the Corps of Engineers is helping with. It's called uh, Mile Point. So what's happened? Exports are already up. Exports are up 18%. Right? We've done seven trade delegations around the world, and those are both to get businesses in Florida more work, but also to sell our state from a tourism standpoint and also get people to buy homes. About 25 percent of the homes in our state are sold to foreigners. We export real estate. So what's happened? Tourism is up, home prices are up, exports are up, and jobs are up. We've had the second biggest drop in unemployment in the country. 
We're one-tenth of one percent above the national average. We're at a four-year low at eight percent. There's only one state beating us. We've, the private sector has generated about 200,000 jobs. There's 24 workforce boards in our state. They're doing a great job. If you look today, you can get a measurement and see how they're doing every day. They're filling between 40 and 50,000 jobs a month. We have about 260,000 job openings in our state right now, and the number of people on employment has dropped in half, from 568,000 to about 270,000. So we're absolutely, we're, ac we're absolutely on track, but we, we cannot stop. We've got to look at, look at where our opportunities are and go after them. Manufacturing jobs are a big opportunity, especially with the focus on our seaports. We should have way more manufacturing jobs. We've got to continue, whether it's, whether it's K through 12, early learning, state colleges or universities, we've got to continue to invest in education because ultimately these companies are going to be built by people in school today. So if we do those, if we focus on jobs and education, then we'll continue to have a robust economy. Thank you, Governor. Governor, do you believe we need immigration reform? And if so, how should it be achieved? We are, think about it, we're a country of immigrants. We are. So here's, if you, if you, we need to make sure this is the country that's still the shining, you know, star that people want to come to, all right? So here's my belief how you do it. Step one, you've got to secure the border. The federal government's got to take the, our borders seriously. <laughs> Step two, we, we should not have our companies at an economic disadvantage to companies in other countries. We should have a work visa program that works. So people that want to come to our country for two months, three months, six months, and work and go home, it should be a program that actually works well. Next, we want people to immigrate to our country. We should, have a we should have a program that everybody understands, that people know how, how to come to our country, that when you want to recruit somebody to move to your country, that happens. So we need to have an immigration policy that's logical, that's well thought out, that works. So absolutely we need to have focus on immigration reform, but we need to do those three things right away. Thank you, Governor. When you speak with executives and CEOs from across the country, what are the biggest obstacles our state faces in bringing business here? And what can the legislature do to make our state more interesting or attractive to business? First thing is pass my budget. Uh, the, that would be nice. <laughs> the, um, now, the I, I think right now the first two things uh, are most important to me is the sales tax on manufacturing equipment, because I know there'll be jobs, and the teacher pay raise. But here's, here's typically, here are the things that I get asked. And, um, and by the way, the, when I got elected, I'll give you a story. I, um, uh, the first month or within two weeks, I met with site selectors. There's a whole industry around this country of people that just help companies pick where they're going to have their corporate office or regional office or where they're going to have their plant, things like that. Uh, there was a meeting. I was uh, down in um, Fort Lauderdale, and they had a big meeting down there. Uh, everyone I talked to, every one of them I met with said this, we don't talk to Florida. You guys, are, you guys are a pain in the rear. You can't make a decision. There's no coordination between local economic development teams and state economic development teams. Right? You, there's just no coordination and I can't get a decision out of y'all. Okay? So we brought in um, Grace Swope uh, to run Enterprise Florida. He did it for Haley Barber in Mississippi. And we were losing to Mississippi. It's a great state, but we shouldn't, this is Florida, we shouldn't be losing to Mississippi. Uh, he's done a great job working with individuals like Kelly Smallridge. Last year, Enterprise Florida, working with local economic development teams, did 160 projects in this state. Their job is to spend your money well, to do a project, they've got to get a return on that investment. Uh, they ha and if they don't, the companies have to give the money back. So that's working. But here's what, here's what companies say. Some of them, um, they, care about, uh, they care about taxes, so asking about income taxes, sales taxes, things like that. And by the way, in the last two years, we've now, we're now in a position that 75% of the businesses in our state don't pay a business tax. 
We were raising it each year uh, a little bit, so to put more, th more of that money back <coughs> into those companies so they can hire more people, do more marketing, things like that. They ask about taxes, they ask about regulation. We've eliminated 2,300 regulations in two years. When I came into office, I think we were raising, adding about 300 a year or so. We've streamlined the permitting process. Look, if we're going to tell you, my view is, as a business person my whole life, I'm OK with somebody telling me no. I might not like it. But don't tell me no two years from now. Tell me no now. And so we've streamlined the permitting process so you know um, if you're going to, one, you, you should know if you're going to get a permit or not and get it quickly or no. Uh, so we've, we've done that. Uh, they ask about the, probably the, the thing that's the hardest is litigation reform. Uh, we've got to be, you know, everybody needs their day in court, but we can't have it where there's frivolous lawsuits. So that's the hardest thing uh, to deal with. But those are the things people ask about. They ask about workforce. Our state colleges and our universities work very well with companies. They work very well with economic, economic development. I have yet to talk to a company, not, there's not one, I don't think there's one deal I've talked to, and I talk to businesses almost every day, where a state college or a university hasn't stepped up and said, I will make sure we have the training and we have the graduates that you need. Uh, and right now, doesn't mean any of these things will happen. We've got a lot of projects, both locally and starting at the state level, on economic development, and companies are moving here. Uh, so we, we're on track. You always worry every day. If, you're, if you've ever been in business like I was, you worry every day. But the other side is if you work it every day, you generally have success. Thank you, Governor. Governor, the, uh, the Florida Cabinet uh, and yourself have been sued by the Florida Wildlife Federation for the January 23rd decision to extend the lease for sugar and vegetable farmers in the Everglades. What was the position of the Florida Cabinet in extending the leases? Well, we, we extended the leases because it was the right thing to do. It was part of uh, what we needed to do to get the land we need to do the Everglades Restoration Project. Uh, if we had not extended those leases, we wouldn't be able to do the Everglades Restoration Project. Plus, they make sense. Um, I think uh, all the Cabinet uh, feels comfortable that we are on the right track uh, on constantly thinking about uh, our environment uh, and taking care of our environment. Uh, so I feel good about what we're doing. I feel good about the team that's doing this. The Because uh, if you think about the future of the state, we all like this. One of the reasons we all want to live here is because we have a beautiful environment. But we also all recognize also that we've got to have great water quality or we can't continue to grow. We're going to pass New York in the next um, 12 to 18 months as far as the third biggest state. We can't continue to do that if our water management districts don't do a good job, uh, if we don't do a good job taking care of our environment. And that's why people want to live here. Thank you, Governor. Governor, what is your view of the multi-state streamlined internet sales tax? The, um, no, I, I don't believe in raising taxes. My, my belief is that we need to live within our means allocate the dollars well, find efficiencies. Um, so that's my, my belief. At the same time, is we, our taxes need to be fair. Uh, so what I've said all along on, uh, on taxing internet sales is, is I want, if, we're, if we're going to do something like that, I don't want any more money out of a family's pocket. Two questions. So if, if, if uh, the legislature wants to, to add this tax, then I want to reduce that same amount of money so families are, there's no more money out of somebody's pocket. Uh, every dollar we take out of somebody's pocket means we're going to have less jobs. Because, you know, when somebody's, when there's money in their pocket, they're buying food or paying for housing, things like that, or starting a business. Thank you, Governor. Should the Florida legislature pass a bill to ban texting while driving? There's, um, I know there's a lot of discussion right now in the legislature. Uh, I haven't seen um, any of those, um, uh, any, anything that's been proposed yet. I look forward to seeing what uh, the legislature uh, ends up uh, coming up with. But I know it's an issue um, that, uh, that a lot of us care about. Thank you, Governor. And for our last question, we saved the hardest one for last. Am I coming back? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Well, you are coming back. That's all, no question about that. That's an easy, but, no, I, was, but, I can answer that one. <laughs> you, yeah. This is the hardest question of the day. During football season, do you root for the Gators, the Hurricanes, or the Seminoles? The, um, i tell you a funny story. The, so when I was running, uh, 
a, um, somebody asked me what my favorite football team in the state was. And I said, um, I like every team. Uh, and the next day, somebody, that, that person said, that person, Rick Scott, the candidate, doesn't know anything about uh, Florida football. <laughs> so I like all the teams. I like all the teams to win. I saw, I saw the um, Bob Kraft the other day that runs the, uh, owns the, uh, uh, the Patriots. He was down in Miami. And it said, quit beating our Florida, our uh, pro teams. Uh, but I'd like every Florida football team to win is what I would like, which would be really nice. Uh, and I have a lot of bets with other governors. I'm tired of giving some of them key lime pies. So thank you, thank you for the you opportunity governor. to be here.